Hello, I'm Morris. Malaria continues to be the number one cause of death in sub-Saharan Africa. Pregnant women and children under five years of age suffer most. In every 30 seconds, one child dies from malaria, amounting to over one million deaths each year. 90% of such cases occur in Africa. Terrible, isn't it? But my dear friend, there is a very easy and effective way of keeping yourself from being infected by malaria. An easy way, I mean. And the way is just making sure you avoid the mosquito bites. It is only the female Anopheles mosquito that transmits the Plasmodium parasites. It bites Sakwete four-and-a-half-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Ngo. Akwete already has the malaria parasites. The mosquito sucks blood containing immature male and female gametes, or sex cells, of the malaria parasite. A male gamete then fuses with a female to produce a zygote or cell. The zygote enters the wall of the mosquito's gut and develops into an oocyte. The oocyte then multiplies to produce thousands of sporozoites or cells. The sporozoites leave the wall of the gut and migrate to the mosquito's salivary glands. The same mosquito bites another young daughter called Isa. The sporozoites in the saliva are injected into Isa's blood and travels to her liver. Here, the sporozoites divide repeatedly in the infected liver cells to form 30,000 to 40,000 merozoites. The merozoites rupture and leave the liver into the bloodstream and invade the red blood cells. Inside the red blood cell, the merozoites multiply rapidly and force the red blood cell to rupture, releasing into the bloodstream a new generation of season that go to infect other red blood cells, multiply and rupture them also. Some merozoites divide to form immature male and female gametes. Another mosquito bites and the process begins in the mosquito's stomach again. If red blood cells rupture, the human being is going to be anemic, to put it in simple terms, because there will be blood loss. But in the context of malaria parasite whilst the blood cells is rupturing and breaking down they also release some toxins and those toxins are what is responsible for the fever that you experience when you have malaria plus when this wraps uh, the red blood cells rupture they tend to coagulate they come together and form a clot and so that clot will block blood vessels. So if it happens to block vital organs, then you are going to have problems. For example, the red blood cells in the brain in a child, then we end up having what you called the cerebral malaria and convulsions because they are blocking the part where if the blood had flowed, oxygen will be supplying to that vital organ. But because of the blockage, oxygen is deprived and therefore you end up having these uh, convulsions and cerebral malaria. If it happens in the kidney, then you are having kidney problems. When the malaria parasite, which is very common in the country, we call it the 
Plasmodium falciparum. That parasite occupies red blood cells in the human being. And every 48 hours, it occupies red blood cells and breaks it down. So every 48 hours, as it ruptures and it releases those toxins, those toxins cause the high fever. So that you see that every 48 hours, you are having fever if you do not treat. And that high fever that is released also triggers what you call febrile convulsions. You see, so every 48 hours, and indeed, if you do not treat those kind of infections, the cycle continues, and for about one to two years, you can have this happening, a duration of untreated infection. The parasites can remain in your blood for up to two years for plasmodium falciparum. We have other types that we call plasmodium malaria. It's also present in Ghana. And if at that type, the, if you don't treat it, it can remain in the body for up to 50 years. Combination drugs are being used to treat malaria. If you use only one drug, it appears it's not working anymore. So artesanal modalquine is a combination drug. So it's a two-pronged approach. Artesanate plus the makes it stronger. Amodaquin strengthens artesanate, and artesanate strengthens amodaquin, to put it in simple terms. So it's able to attack the parasite at all fronts and breaks it down. That is why the WHO, World Health Organization, recommended the use of artesanate plus an effective drug. My advice to the public is, if you have malaria, please don't take one drug alone because you are rather making the parasite stronger. And in the end, you see that you end up becoming weaker and weaker. You end up having severe malaria, which can kill, especially for a child. It can kill them within 24 hours. To avoid such deaths and to save our monies from drug purchases and other inconveniences, all you and I need to do is to avoid the mosquito bite. These are some simple steps you can take to avoid coming into contact with the malaria parasites. Always sleep under insecticide treated nets ITN. Keep your environment clean. All area around your household must be free from standing water. No water should be allowed to stand for more than seven days maximum. Seek treatment at the recognized and approved sources within 24 hours from the first sign of fever, especially for children under five years of age. Ensure that you complete all malaria medication as prescribed by the healthcare provider. Take care. Please avoid the mosquito bites. We need you. Your nation Ghana also needs you.